All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. This is Paula Connor, your host of the Divine Feminine Roundtable. And we are joined today with uh, Lori Ladd and Carrie Kay, who joined us last time. Carrie was with us last time. We had uh, quite a few folks on the last one, so we didn't have too much time to share. So I'm super excited that uh, Carrie could come back and that Lori is joining us from California in the U.S. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Um, before we begin, um, happy Father's Day to all the glorious men out there. The father, the sons, the uncles, the dads, the nephews. We love you. We honor you. We, uh, we just, yeah, I don't know what else to say. But to glorious men out there, happy Father's Day. Mm. Um, and then what I want to do is if we can just step up into our hearts, everyone who's listening, real quick, and then we're going to begin. Push your attention on the area of your heart, imagining the breath is flowing in and out of your heart space. Deeper and slower than usual. And then let's just send out to everyone that is listening, and all the men, all the women, all the beings on planet Earth, we send our love to you, and we hold that in our heart space just for a minute. And come on back. And now that we are in our heart spaces, I have a little announcement to make for everyone. So we've had some comments, um, and we really appreciate everybody's comments. Um, but I'm going to ask that you, as my mom taught me when I was little, if you don't have anything nice to play, nice to say, if you, if you could please keep that to yourself. We are offering this Divine Feminine Roundtable as a celebration of the energy, of the, the softness, the creativity, and it's inclusive, and all are welcome. If you have a suggestion or a recommendation of someone that you would like to have join us, then please do reach out to us and let us know. Everybody you recommend, we do reach out to, and sometimes they're not available, so we're very grateful for that. But just to let everybody know, everyone is welcome. All are welcome in the garden. So, um, what we were going to talk about today was the importance of neutrality. Staying neutral as we witness our world. There certainly is a uh, very on-purpose intention to pit humanity against humanity. Man, against man, man against woman, country against country. And what we need to be doing here is unifying. We need to come together as a human family and let start focusing on what our commonalities are, what brings us together and what unifies us. So polarity and zero point. And then who would like to go first? Well, if anyone wants to go first, I will. <laughs> My internet. Sorry if my internet is in and out. Yeah, please do. I'm going to put myself on mute. Okay. So it's a broad topic, obviously. And to pick up a broad topic like this, kind of out of nowhere, I'm going to do my best just to introduce to you the way that I relate to that field of neutrality. And I know, by the way, that different people have got different names for it. Like some people will affectionately call it the sacred neutral, the sacred neutrality, because when you're there, you'll realize that there truly is something sacred 
about that neutrality. And other people refer to it as zero point, uh, which is the ultimate stillness. Others refer to it as the void. And it is all of those things. But it has this very specific signature energy that if you've been in it, by whatever name you know that place, you know that place. It has this resounding stillness. It's the kind of silence that it feels as if your ears are blocked. You know when your ears are blocked, it's that very weird feeling. It feels almost like all of your senses have been heightened and it feels almost as if you're in some kind of a sensory deprivation chamber at the same time. So what an interesting experience it is to be in this field of zero point. When you're there, a very interesting thing happens. And that is, there is no judgment. All judgment ceases. You know, the inner talk, that incessant rambling from the mind that doesn't shut up even when you sleep. It does when you're in the sacred neutral. It actually falls into such a deep silence that everything, every part of you is brought into that deep silence in such a way that finally everything in you is calibrated to that field of oneness. There's no inner dialogue. There's no inner picture. There is just the peace of that moment. And I often have people in that moment and I say to them at the end, I say to them, right, come on back, open your eyes. And almost always the answer is the same. And that is, I don't want to come back. It's so beautiful here. It's mm. the ultimate stillness. And of course, that's the opposite to where we as third dimensional beings have lived. Because as third dimensional beings, we've lived in the super highway of, data downloads and uploads and information and it's a bombardment just just watching netflix just checking your social media just getting in your car and going to your local supermarket is a normalized bombardment of information see we don't think that it's strange because we do it every day except what we call normal is so ferociously abnormal that there really are no words for it. That frenetic talking in the mind, that incessant chatter, it makes us insane. So we're almost permanently in analysis, even if we're watching Netflix or going to the store or whatever we're doing. We're in this permanent analysis, and it's kind of got the schizophrenic quality to it where we'll think one thing and then bam, we're on to the next thing and on to the next and on to the next and on to the next. And in all of that talking, we lose touch with the truth of who we are, which is the saddest thing that could ever, ever occur to any human being is the loss of contact with the authentic self. And of course, the people try. They try everything that they can to regain it, not even knowing where to look, but they're pretty desperate to find it. It is always, always available in that sacred neutrality. Sacred neutrality, a person could explain it to you, and I know all of you beautiful ladies here will have so much to share about it. You've got your own wisdom about how you might access it, but I also know that as much as we can intellectualize and explain what the sacred field is comprised of, until you've been there, it's, it's just words. It's just somebody's sight, somebody's idea. And the beautiful thing is that the moment somebody steps into that sacred neutral and embodies the neutrality of that place, the people with whom they converse, should they choose to, are then exposed to that zero point energy. So no doubt the listeners today are going to have those intermittent moments of being able to connect to the speaker's neutrality. That's open for everybody. 
that's available for everybody. And in order to tune into that, it's a simple breath. It's a simple... And I don't even need to tell you what to do after that. Because it emanates. You'll feel it inside your heart predominantly. You'll feel it. Your whole body responds. Your breath even responds. Your breath relaxes. Your chest drops. Your body relaxes. And that's how you know. And you know that the person with you or the people listening to you have also accessed that neutral zone. So when we, as third dimensional, frenetic, crazy, constantly analyzing, constantly chattering beings, gain exposure to this space, which is the all and the nothing. It's where everything and no thing exists simultaneously. Sounds like such a mystical place, doesn't it? And yet it's available to each one of us in a breath. Literally in seconds, it's available to each one of us. And when we take that opportunity, nobody needs to stand in front of us then and teach us because their point takes over. The neutrality becomes the guide. And the more that you as the experiencer or the participant can surrender to that place and just be in it, be still, be present, that place, the more that place teaches you who you are, what it means to be you, there's no limit to what it shows you. It shows you what it's like to be a being on planet Earth that doesn't hold judgment. The moment that happens, I see Murphy is with us today. Murphy's law. How? How there she is. You back. We lost Hello. you there for a bit, and Murphy Murphy popped by quickly. <laughs> Murphy, how could you do that to me? I was on such a roll. Seriously, I know it was beautiful. <laughs> Damn you, Murphy! Where, where, where did Murphy get hold of me? <laughs> back to the place where you said the moment that happened. When you're in neutral point, when you're away from polarity and that an, an incessant analysis, when you're in neutral point, okay. and you're breathing. being taught. Right, right. Yeah, so it's teaching you about who you are. It's teaching you how to be without judgment. The moment you've dropped judgment, you've dropped third dimensional connection. That is the connecting point. It's the thing that tethers us to the third dimension. The moment we drop that tethering point to the third dimension through dropping judgment, by default, we become aware of the self that already exists in fifth dimensional and higher frequencies. So the power of zero point is such that it aligns you with the truth of who you are. It introduces you to the most magnificent creature that you could ever dare to meet, and that is yourself. Because there's nothing else there. And in a crazy way, not even you are there. And I know that that sounds, for those who haven't experienced it, I know that that sounds like, what is she talking about? But <laughs> you'll, you'll know it when you're in there, that you are everything and nothing simultaneously. You are both the creator and the creation simultaneously. And so you have, each person on planet Earth has access to this sacred neutral. And when you step into it, and by the way, that, that's what we need guides for. It could be an off-planet guide who you connect to. It could be a human guide. It could be one of these beautiful ladies here it could be a book or a best friend, whatever your guide is, that's the purpose of a guide, is to connect you or to teach you how to connect yourself to zero point. But once you're in there, once you're in the zero point or the sacred neutral, you are perfectly guided. 
and it doesn't speak in words. You see, a lot of people think that. A lot of people say to me, well, Carrie, I had this amazing experience, and there I was, I was in the zero point, and, and I could feel it. And they say, but I don't know what I learned in there. And that's natural, because there's no words exchanged in that divine space. We have to learn to then assimilate the information in a completely different way. We're finally not assimilating everything through the cognitive process. We're then learning how to draw upon wisdom that is embodied. So we still get to access the information, but we get to access it on a different level. And most often, I describe it as knowing without knowing. It's like how you, and I'm sure everybody's had that experience where you just know something. And if, if somebody says to you, but how, where did you learn that? You would say, well, I don't know. I just know. That's what it feels like when you've been in the sacred neutral. You come out with that knowing that just resides within you. It pulses in you. So I don't want to hog the show. I don't want to, I don't want to, I could keep talking and I'm just going to put a gag there now so somebody else can talk. <laughs> I'll just add really <laughs> Yeah, just to add that, that, and that is exactly where true peace is found. When mm. to, because you're right, Carrie. When when I experience the zero point, it's literally like I'm in water, and my ear mm. like a pool of water up to here. At least this is how I experienced it with just what I've been learning from you over the last little bit. Is it's like you're in water, but the, it's the silence speaks to you to your point, yeah. and it's in the knowing, and that. But that is where the true peace is. In, 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 in any chaotic, chaotic storm, it's that peace, that oneness of source. Definitely. Yeah. Do like, what, do, what, does the, what do the Pleiadians, because you channel the Pleiadians, what do they say, or do they talk to you about zero point or your experience? Want to add to what I just shared there, which was lovely. Who are you talking to, Paula? I was talking to Lori. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so what I would, what I, they were, they always show me visions, you know, uh, they always show me pictures. And so when Carrie was talking, they were showing me the humans, us in the arena, basically, right in the third dimension, looking out at our external at this chaotic polarity playing out. It can't get any more polarized and it's going to continue to get more polarized, right? We're going to, um, Sound quality is better when we mute, okay. Um, so we're looking out and duality is getting more intense, polarity is getting more intense. It's, it's, it's becoming much more obvious that we are standing in a dualistic polarity field. And our role as these ascend, consciously ascending humans is to stand in exactly what Carrie was talking about and what, you're, what we're talking about, which is this consciousness that we call like 5D consciousness, right? And beyond. We stand holding it in our bodies, aware of it, practicing it over and over and over with the breath, while we also participate in the deconstruction or the realigning, unifying that which we are watching and saying, holy shit. Yeah, what the hell? Because what I'm feeling is not necessarily what the collective is experiencing yet. But what I'm experiencing is what the collective is eventually going to be experiencing. So how do I hold this, teach this perhaps, show the human how to access it, while it looks like there's so much chaos, how could that possibly be? who I am, how could that possibly be true when what I'm seeing is massive polarity and duality? That's the practice, is how do we hold this as often as we can with our breath while we stand in the midst of the arena of the third dimension where massive amounts of polarity and duality are going to continue to unravel. It's going to get more intense, right? And more intense and more intense. And so that's our, that's our practice is this neutral zero point in our bodies connecting to all of who we are 
as often as we can to remember what we're doing here so that we can hold that awareness so that other humans can say, oh my God, you're right. Oh my God, you're right. Oh my God, you're right, right? And guide them through this most amazing and miraculous physical shift in consciousness, right? I would love to jump in there. Can you hear me? I really resonate with what you're sharing. And I know for me, it's also the tool or the direct access to that has always been through stepping into the role of the observer and observing the duality, observing, because the duality begins in your mind and then you see it outside of yourself. It's not that we're watching something outside of us and it's affecting us. Yes, but it begins in your mind, how you're perceiving it, how you're seeing it. And we all have these active minds in this realm of duality and it takes time for that to quiet down. Uh, part of that is also just the environmental locations that we're in, the frequency effects. Those are real things when we're surrounded by microwave frequencies we're constantly being fed these not zero point neutral frequencies. So what I learned with a lot of the masters that I studied with was to step into the role of the observer and observe it all like you're watching a television program. It was really the best knowledge I ever learned about how to watch television in the best way <laughs> because I don't really watch television anymore because I, it doesn't, not a lot of it resonates with me. Um, but by stepping into the role of the observer, you're not judging it as right or wrong. You're just observing what is. And from that place, you're really in this neutral territory. And also, I completely agree that it is our job to also put voice to, this is not in alignment with service to source or service to oneness or service to God. This is in alignment with service to self. This is not healthy for me because I also feel that it's really important that when you find that neutral zero point and you find that balance within a 5D, for example, that you start to walk in that direction more and more. For me, that means sovereignty. Where in my life am I not able to be sovereign? Where have I entrapped myself in an unsovereign thought, program, or an idea? And therefore, what relationships outside of me are reflecting that? Sometimes when you step into sovereignty and to neutrality, that means that you have to keep walking and let people go along the way because they are not wanting to participate with you in that arena. They still very much want to participate in an arena of duality. But from a neutral space, it would be to not make them wrong, but to also honor with your spiritual, higher self, starseed, galactic, angelic discernment that this is not in the best and highest for me. I honor from a place of neutrality that this is what you're choosing for your lesson and your journey, but I'm going to continue to walk in the direction of what, where my soul is calling me. And so in that way, it's really beyond the mind and it really comes into the heart, what resonates as truth in the entire being. So I feel like there's a lot of aspects to coming into that space of neutrality. Thank you, Nina. Very well said. I have to say, I'm kind of blissing out on everything you're saying, sisters. <laughs> just, <laughs> Terry, I just want to acknowledge you first. That share was spoken like a true master. That was absolutely stunning. And I really felt, you know, you know, when somebody's been there and they can feel it and it's, it's home, it's like your, your, your touch base, your home base. And when you don't just go and visit it sometimes and then preach about it, but you live it and therefore you can describe it and talk about it all day long, you know, and I really got that from you. You're so genuine. And Laurie as well, what you were talking about the, the duality and coming from that place, absolutely spot on. I totally love it. <sighs> and yeah, Nina, I get it. The sovereignty as well. And, and what it reminds me of, like I grew up with, an enlightened master in my in my life and if you if you don't mind I'd just like to share a little story of something that he told me it took me years to understand but I get it now and um, so this guru 
when he first came to London, he'd literally left America, sorry, left India for the very first time. Some people from London went over and took him away from his family. Um, his, the father, his father before him had been this incredible enlightened master, walked all over India, spoken to millions and millions of people. And this, and his youngest son, uh, Prem, was his name, Prem Rawat, he was um, speaking in front of crowds of thousands from the age of four. And when his father passed away at the age of eight, they pronounced him to be the new master. And he was, he was just constantly speaking. And so my, my parents were amongst a group of people who'd heard about him back in uh, 1971. And they brought him over to London. And my parents were part of a group of people, small group of people who were creating the ashram for him to live in. And my parents conceived me whilst working in this ashram. I know, right? You're not supposed to be. <laughs> it's not very ashram kind of behavior. <laughs> but my dad was building and decorating it. My mum was working and funding it. And they were cooking. And, you know, my, they tell these wonderful stories all cooking in the garden on the fire outside for all the people that were helping. And everything that my parents did at that time was about total devotion and service to peace on earth because this this child he was 14 at the time when he first came to london and all he talked about was peace and truth in the heart and the knowledge of self and he would give techniques he still does to this day give very very simple techniques to have the knowledge of self and turn the awareness that gets plugged out there into the world the right the wrong the good the bad the left the right the up the down the you know the whole duality how to basically take exactly the same senses exactly the same uh, cognitive awareness connections that we have to understand reality or at least what we think we understand of reality and to turn those same cognizance uh, sensitivities and connections within ourselves to experience that which we truly are on all of the levels that we are but specifically into heart source and that neutral point i like to call source that's what it feels right to me and so many years later so i was around this guru my entire life i mean i just loved being in his presence constantly um it was an incredible way to be brought up i mean unbelievable and so many many years later i find myself i've got a couple of kids i'm stressing out i'm skint i'm having a horrible time and other people who are even devotees as well um are just behaving really in a nasty way and i'm confused right i'm really confused i'm like why are these supposedly spiritual people acting like what i thought at the time were total assholes not being loving and spiritual like when they're in meditation or they're in an event with the guru they were beautiful shining radiant divine human beings outside of that my my judgment was they're behaving like total shitbags they're horrible and i was getting really confused and i'd had quite a, a lot of confusion between plugging in being in that internal heart space source breath love for me it's unconditional love absolute unconditional you know there's it's like so neutral it's like water that kind of love it's just expansive and then opening my eyes and going now i've got to deal with the world and kids and money and people and even my community and i really struggled with that inside and outside kind of situation right the inner world was beautiful the outer world was horrible and i kept wanting to escape into my meditation and stay there and not live in the world and it got worse and worse and worse to the point i really didn't want to live in the world so i find myself i'm at this event actually in australia outdoor event with my guru and hadn't seen him in a really long time and for the first time in my life i get to ask him a question and actually the the deal was none of us were supposed to ask him questions. We could just, you know, say our thanks or something. But I got hold of this microphone and I was like, I need to ask you a question. And my guru, who I've always wanted to thank and to love, he's sitting just really close over there. And instead of me sharing my, my gratitude, I asked this question. And I said, so why is it that it's so beautiful on the inside in this place of what we're calling today sacred neutrality that peace that bliss that love and it's so awful on the outside what do i do first of all he says i'm not answering questions 
and I nearly died. I was like, I wanted the ground to swallow me up. <laughs> and then he was like, ah, but I can't resist. And he answered and he said, so this is what I do. He said, if you're walking around and you smell, and he actually said these words, right? He actually said, if you're walking around and you can smell doo-doo, poop, poo. He said, and you're asking everybody, check your shoes, check your shoes. I can smell something really bad. And he said, what you need to do is check your own. And then I really died because I was like, my master is telling me I smell of dog shit. And it was horrific. <laughs> that was how my judgment went, right? But what he said, <laughs> it gets, I'll get to the point. The point is, he said, this is what I do, is I wear my cologne just here, just under my nose, so that everywhere I go, that's what I smell. And I'm for ages, I was like, what is he talking about? And I got it. Years later, I, I finally understood what he meant. And I'm just going to share that with you quickly. What my my understanding of that was that when I am in my what's under our nose is right breath what's right here under our nose every single moment of every single day of every day that we have ever lived is this incredible now o'clock this incredible presence this incredible we don't even know where it comes from or where it goes to but it is life itself. And without this breath under the nose, none of us actually exist. None of us, we're, we're all dust. Everything on this planet is dust. Nothing would exist on this earth if it wasn't breathed in some way, right? Every living thing respires, every living thing breathes. And so here I have this now, this presence right under my nose. And when I step into it, or not even step into it, but literally take a moment of consciousness to first of all receive it. Because it's not something I have to go and create. It comes to me all the time. And am I willing, am I humble enough, or am I in need of peace enough and recognizing that to step into what's already being given constantly all the time and has been given and will be given forever? And I, can I have that opportunity that I give to myself, this gift of total presence that I first learn to receive? And then, like you said, Kerry, learn to come into tune with, learn to recognize, humble myself even more and learn to really be in the presence of presence itself and be taught Every single one of us have exactly the same teacher. Isn't it interesting how we don't all know the same? But the teacher teaches the same thing unconditionally, unconditionally to every single human being. Nobody is left out. Nobody is judged. Good or bad person, right or wrong person, it doesn't matter. And, and can we... Just be the receiver of the gift, the not knower, the beggar, if you like, to put our cup out and say, I don't know. Let me go to the place that does know, that breath, and be the receiver and learn to listen, learn to hear the teachings with our feelings, and learn to embody that which is constantly knocking on our door, asking us to embody it. It's asking us constantly, every single moment that we breathe, are you going to let me in this time? Are you going to open the door? Are you going to, you know, embody that which I am, which you truly are? And it's only our resistances, and like you said, our 3D judgments, Laurie, and our justifications, and that pushes that away. And the moment we just say, okay, when have you had enough pain? to stop pushing it away? When have you been pushed up against your edge of madness or your edge of coping or your edge of you know, sickness in your body where you are finally gonna say, I'm gonna stop fighting with life itself and just come back in and be filled up, be taught, be guided by this, by life itself and come home. And I think what my teacher was saying at that time is, 
this I wear that cologne, that piece right here, right under my nose. Because when I'm in peace everywhere I go, I bring that peace with me. And I, it doesn't matter where I am, all I'm seeing is the love. All I'm seeing is the beauty. All I'm seeing is the perfection. That here's a human being either taking the opportunity to receive the gift or simply not taking the opportunity to receive the gift. And it literally just comes down to that. Are you receiving or not receiving? And when would you like to start receiving? <laughs> so that's how it is for me. And it's just like, it's, it's like, what else, what other way is there to live other than that, to be a true human being? To your point, it's, um, it's experiential. Which, which, which is what is so wonderful about it because it happens perfectly for each individual based on where they're at in their own experience. My, mm -hmm. The echo. So, so in my experience, when I connect with that eternal now moment, like we should really invent a watch that just says now. Time. Now. now. Still now. Because that's where we know that that's the only place that we can really create, right? They call it they call it an echo and if I can tell a really quick story since we're telling a story and this is about compassion so we live uh, we have a second story place that we're at and I was sitting out in the backyard and of course I have a little Loki bear dog a, an English bulldog and there's a chipmunk um, obviously there's little chipmunks that go up and down he figured out I showed him where he could sit on the deck at like a level at the top floor and look at this little chipmunk running all over the place, right? So his tail's going like crazy because he's got this whole, this whole new vision. This chipmunk and I see the guy go way up in the pine tree, right? And I'm just watching him and then he loses his grip. Free falling upside down 20 feet, this little chipmunk, right? And I'm like, oh, dude. And then he catches a hold of the branch and there's like, oh, man, are you okay? Like, holy crap, dude. Like, you just nearly free fall 30 feet. And my dog's wagging his tail. But the, 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 the awareness that I had in that moment was that when you feel compassion for another creature, another life form, it creates a ripple in the field. Like, it feels like it literally changes the field of consciousness or something. Just with that little dude, are you okay? And then like, he was really quiet. I'm like, holy crap, man, are you all right? Because he's like really quiet on the branch now, right? Anyway, I just wanted to share that whole compassion part when we can be out of judgment as we watch our fellows perhaps be challenged by this polarity because they haven't found a way perhaps yet to come back home to the heart, to the breath because immediately it slows things down it's like it opens up your senses so that you can know more, more stillness or more peace when you can find it in, the, in your inner being. I love the stories that are being shared here. And Tara, I resonated so deeply with your share about just under the nose because I've it's kind of a thing where every morning I put rose oil under my nose so I can smell roses. And it's a reminder to stop and smell the roses through the day. And it really works. Um, and I, I love your story too, Paula. Absolutely. I was going to say when I observe nature, I really feel like I come into that space of neutrality and zero point. And just in that observing of how nature is still even in its movement there is this non-judgmental it's not like the monkey is judging the dog for being the dog and they really kind of accept that the monkey is the monkey and the dog is the dog the dog isn't like excuse me but why don't you act like a dog and the monkey isn't like why don't you act like a dog they just accept each other where they are in their cycle of experience. Um, and I had an experience with Ramana Maharishi in the spiritual sense, in an astral manner, but I was in meditation in Ramana Maharishi's cave where he attained enlightenment. It was a very powerful experience. 
And one of the things that he said to me was, I want you to look at the trees. And there were all these monkeys all over the trees. And he said, do you see the behavior of monkeys? And the monkeys were, they were, I love monkeys, but in India, they're little jerks. They steal your stuff. They're, they're kind of like the little rascals, you know, of the jungle. Like we have rascals in humanity. They're like the rascals that are stealing your stuff. They're the tricksters. You always have to be on your toes with them because if you don't look, they'll take your food or whatever. And he said, um, and I, this is really funny. So at the time I was kind of dating a lot of men that were like more like monkeys. And so he basically said to me, <laughs> um, if you want to be with someone who acts more like a dog, why do you keep dating monkeys and try to make them act like dogs? And it was such a great lesson because I realized that we do this thing where we, we think that someone needs to be a certain way or behave a certain way. And we're not being honest about accepting where they are in their journey. And so when you're really honest, and that's also, I think, important for people to understand is for me, that doesn't mean I'm being judgmental. That is a form of unconditional love. I am unconditionally accepting and loving what you're choosing and where you are. And with that discernment, I'm not trying to turn you into something that you're not to fit into my storybook of what I've projected upon you. I'm accepting where you are. And I'm deciding from my discernment, is that going to move me farther away from my neutral zone? Or is that going to move me closer to my neutral zone? So I, I just, I always think about that in, in life, kind of watching all of this that's playing out before our eyes is if we were in the animal kingdom, who is playing what roles right now? Very good point. Oh, sorry. No, I was just saying, very good point. Please continue, Carrie. It just dawned on me um, as I was sitting listening that neutrality is often misunderstood by people in the sense that there are some people, and I learned this the hard way, you see, because I, I understand what neutrality means, I understand what zero point means, and I understand the sacredness of it. But a lot of people confuse neutrality for apathy. You know, like they think, well, it means you just don't care. It means, you know, you, you're not taking a side. And I think there's an important aspect to go over as we talk about neutrality, just to cover very briefly what neutrality is not. Yeah. And obviously it's not apathy, it's acceptance. It's unconditional acceptance. And thank you, Nina, because you used those words. I just kind of triggered that in my brain about how we find unconditional acceptance or unconditional anything. It is, of course, in that neutrality. So neutrality is the place where dualities and polarities cease to exist. It's the place where creation, the original seed of creation that created the universe and the universes that surround this universe began. It all began at the zero point. And an interesting thing occurs if you sit in zero point for long enough, there's a little flutter that will catch your eye or a, a little rustle, a little ripple which is so noticeable because when you're in zero point and it's this deep still no thingness and suddenly there's a ripple, that's the equivalent of neon lights going off. And as you become aware of that little ripple, because of your awareness to that ripple, you create more ripples or you create more of whatever you're seeing. So you learn in the sacred neutral, you learn very quickly how creation occurs. And you learn that you have all of these dualities and all of these polarities spinning off as creative offsets from the sacred neutral. But the sacred neutral is the great balancing place where all is acceptable. So it doesn't mean that you agree with something. It means you accept that it is. You're not in resistance. So I think that's a valid point. And the other thing that I wanted to say just popped into my mind as we're talking about neutrality is to understand neutrality, we also have to understand time because 
neutrality exists outside of time. We don't get to access neutrality from a time-based place. And in order to understand time, think about time as in past, present, and future. We know those three tenses. We're taught them in school. But we're not taught about another almost anomalous place, which is the now. The now and the present are not the same. The present still has a time stamp on it. So if you look at your clock right now, mine says 5.50 p.m. That's my time. I'm present at 5.50 p.m., but I'm not in the now necessarily. The now happens when I lose time completely. And I lose my association to time. And I no longer identify myself as a time-based being. When I'm in the now. I'm in a timelessness. Then you're in zero point. So, you know, when people say to you, um, gee, did two hours just pass? It felt like two seconds. Or sometimes the opposite can happen. <laughs> it can be two seconds that feels like two hours. When we have these time anomalies, look into them because it's very often accessible to come into the now zone. The now is the doorway that leads to the sacred neutral. If you take two things, and that is your connection to the now and your connection to your breath, you've got it. You're there. It's that uncomplicated. <laughs> and I, I have to laugh because I think about the reams and the reams and the reams of books and tutorials and lessons that people learn. I'm not saying there's no value in them. There's huge value in everything. But what if we all knew that we could access the true divinity that created all that is in that much ease? Your breath and coming into the now. Your breath helps you to come into the now, by the way. And then you are experiencing yourself in pure presence. And earlier I spoke about that presence and I said, you can hear it in your ears, the equivalent of being underwater, Paula, as you so perfectly said, yes, it is that feeling of being underwater. And it feels as if there's a thickness in that silence. And it feels as if there is a, a tangibility to the presence. It feels as if that presence has something that you can feel that wraps around you that you're breathing into and out of your body but your body is also becoming a part of it so when that happens you're experiencing yourself in presence as presence itself and that's the gift attainable to each one of us when we enter the zero point is that yes we become present but we also become aware of ourselves as presence. So here we are. We think of ourselves very often as little fledglings, human beings, little fledglings, finding our angel wings in the world, learning how to be some kind of spiritual master being. At least we think that's what we're most we're supposed to do for many of us. And there's no there's no 50 to 500 year learning curve if we allow ourselves to truly engage with ease, we can come into the sacred stillness of this exact now, which is outside the time, but in the fullness of presence. And if you wanted to, you could put your hand on your heart. And you could just be here. I find that um, the more I practice being in the state of stillness and being in the present moment outside of time, I find that, um, this is gonna sound really funny, but when I'm like walking in nature, I actually even said to my husband last week, we went for a walk and I said, I know this sounds really funny, but I seriously think that the birds are singing for me sometimes. <laughs> You know, when you notice and when you honor and you love nature so much, because I 
had over the last couple of weeks, as I say, I just told you that story about the chickmunk. And this is really simple stuff, right? Like it's super duper simple. But being in nature, just sitting by a tree, listening to the birds or the or the wind, or I got the I, I got to swim yesterday in the lake. It feels like um, as a present being, you're celebrating the presence of God, of nature, and seeing and witnessing source in, in, in everything that you're playing with. And then, and then my heart sings, and I feel uh, so much magic. And that's, to your point, this is available for all of us, everyone. It's like so close, like it's closer than here or here, right? In the heart. And we just have so much love that we can give because that's really who we really are, right? We're not quarreling and squabbling over what someone else is doing because if we just paid more attention to what was in our own world, cleaned that up first, loved that first, then we can step into the world with more to give. Absolutely. It's a total self-love conversation. I feel that's where I want to go with it. Um, but Nina, thank you for that so story. It was so cute. I'm going to put my rose oil there. But Laurie, I'm wondering, and Kerry, thank you for raising the timeless element because um, that was just sitting right there ready to be opened. And I've been wanting to have a conversation or bring time into this round table for a while it almost pops its head up a few times and laurie i love you i feel if you don't feel too put on the spot timelessness and dimensions and everything you experience how do you experience that presence and, and timelessness with uh, with what you do if you don't mind me asking love to hear thanks for asking yeah you know i um I was in Mount Shasta last week and a friend of mine took me to this space that was very Lemurian 5D consciousness, but it was on the earth. So it wasn't, you know, I always like, I typically go, I bilocate into the earth to sort of feel these portals, right? Oh my God, it's so, or I'll go into a ship or I'll go somewhere other, or even in my body, I'll go in, I'll go any, anywhere other than on top of the earth, right? Um, Meaning I stand on the river and all of a sudden this 5D consciousness is right here. And everything that we're talking about right now, I felt on the earth plane. And the reason I'm saying this is that just like Paula said, this 5D consciousness that we're all talking about, which is also eternal consciousness. It's also all that ever is, was, and will be. It is, it is, it is, it is a now moment that is beyond our comprehension. It's, when you talk about time, you, we, it's almost impossible to be able to comprehend timelessness while we're still in physicality. It's almost impossible because it doesn't, it's almost like, because when the Galactic Federation talks to me about how everything was created and what has already occurred and yet hasn't occurred and yet it's occurring in the now, you're, you're almost blown away because Anything and everything is possible in this now moment. There's nothing predetermined based on the frequency that we hold now and the frequency that we hold the next now and the next now and the next now. We, we have, because we're co-creating in every now, you can't be predetermined in any other now other than what is in the now. So when they tell, when people say, well, when's, what's gonna happen in the future? They don't say anything other than what's happening in the now, which believe it or not, there's multiple things happening in the now that they could tell us that we would be so confused about because all of these could possibly happen, right? Like, oh sure, you guys could go down this timeline or you could go down this timeline or you could go down this timeline, but that would make us go crazy and then we'd have anxiety and stress and worry, right? So the, the, the beauty about zero point is it takes away the human's anxiety and stress and worry about what could or may or may not or all of it. And it brings us into none of that matters. 
time doesn't matter. Let go of when am I going to be in 5D? When is the new earth? Don't, first of all, it's here. We're already there. We already are all that ever is, was, and will be. We're already there. It's nowhere to go, right? But because we have linearity, we're like, oh my God, no, I need to know. I have, I have a book. I have a timeline. I have like a, I prepare, I prepare. I'm a human. I prepare. And we're shifting so fast, right? So that, that, you, you can't predict anything anymore. We're just jumping timelines like it's like we're hop skipping, like we're jumping a rope. It's like do, 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 do. And each timeline creates an experience and a path. But because we're jumping so quickly now, humans and the collective and earth, you can't, I mean, it's just as like, you, you can't, per, you can't have time because it's impossible how fast we're shifting frequencies it would be a disservice to say, oh, you've got five more years. No, we don't. We got three more months or, you know, time is just irrelevant. And when the human outside, you know, we're, we're, we've all practiced this zero point field that we're talking about. We've practiced presence and now moment that Carrie talks about so beautifully. We've been practicing it. We, we kind of understand it and can feel it and we can drop into it. There are so many humans that can't yet. And they're in this anxiety of time, 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 time. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Oh my God. How am I going to, when's my next job going to come? It's all about time. Right. And when you find that zero point, it all goes away. It's like, Oh, none of it matters. Oh my God. Wait a second. I'm completely safe. Literally everything goes away when you're in that zero point field of oneness that unified field you don't even care it's like it doesn't it doesn't matter it doesn't matter because you know that all is well it's all is well it's like a tr time is like a trap it keeps us in that anxiety space right and the key that they are always talking about that humans have a hard time sort of digesting is that you can't, there is no, you can't predict anything. You, you got, you got to let that go. You got to let go of needing to know. You got to let go of preparing. You've got to let go of all that's presence. That's now, right? You got to let go of, especially if you know, for all of you that are watching right now and saying, well, I don't know how to get there. If you know that we're shifting so quickly that every, that we're literally jumping timelines into more expanded timelines, meaning more unified fields, more abundance, more love, more joy, more peace. If you realize that that's what's happening to us, even though it looks chaotic out there, then you can relax a little bit. That's what they're telling us, right? That's the message I'm always getting. We can relax because we're shifting so quickly into these more unified, expanded fields right here, right here. We're sh it's happening. It just may not look that way. And there's a lot of internal work that you have, not work, but there's a lot of internal consciousness that has to be moved about um, within you, integrated, alchemized, so that you can remember this. Oh yeah, this is how it works. I remember, you know. On that note, Lori, of course we just had the, or in, in a, quite the weekend with the solstice energies and the eclipse. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I will, because we're graced with your presence and everyone that's here. What do your guides share with respect to this passage that we're in right now for the listeners we know that it's so important to let let the world go and create on focusing on your own peace and being in the internal world healing your hurts and healing source but perhaps laura you can share a little bit of guidance for the listeners as to what passage we're moving through right now to help them with perhaps a few tools i mean this conversation when i saw the topic this, this is what's happening right now is coming into a unified field. So, so what they show is like, I did a video on this the other day about this, the kaleidoscope, right? It's like, we're in this big kind of one unified kaleidoscope. And yet there's all these 
unique and uh, different frequency sort of experiences that are all happening in this one kaleidoscope, creating all these different stories and experiences, but it's one unified field from a higher perspective, right? And, 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 and when you get into that, to that zero point, you see that it all is just one massive experience duality, polarity, dark, light, low, high, whatever it is, but it's all one. And we are being asked and learning to practice, which is why this conversation is so great, because it's allowing us to remember how to move into that space of where you can, when you're in the now moment, you don't even see, you don't even see this as a kaleidoscope, right? It's just presence. It's just consciousness. But when you step out of the unified field in the now moment and you're walking around in your every day, you start to observe this experience that we're having, this experiment, as this beautiful canvas of all of these different consciousnesses merging into a unified field where it's all experienced as one. And so the only way to get there is that we have to see that which is separate. We have to see that which is dualistic. We have to see all of that within ourselves and the collective. So the first layer is the third dimensional layer, right? Oh, I see that duality. I see that polar. They want us to see it, see it, see it. And then you move past that into the fourth dimensional field, right? Where it's like, oh, I'm moving into that neutral space. I'm moving into that now. And then you go beyond that and you see that it is all one beautiful piece. It's, it, it, you, your, your heart opens to unconditional love for everything that's being experienced. Every human that's doing whatever they're doing, including yourself, including every now moment when you are angry and upset and sad and depressed and not being whatever it is that you think you should be being, right? We have a kaleidoscope, so to speak, inside of ourselves as well. And it's unifying. So is the collective, it's unifying. And so can we see in this, the last couple of days has been all about, can you start to see it all as one and unconditionally, empathically, compassionately start to love all of it, even that which you have no idea how to even comprehend and understand, including what's going on inside of you, right? I love it. My guides say, you know, if you have a moment and you are upset by somebody's behavior, forgive them for not being who you think they should be. Right. And the shoulds. We got to let go of the shoulds. Shoulding. Stop shoulding on me. <laughs> but forgive them for not being who they think they should be. And focusing just, yeah. Lovely. Well said. Who else wants to share? Nina, you've got something. I do. Well, I'm just so excited because the Pleiadians came in this week and they said, okay, this is the transmission. And they showed me this huge wave and it was this beautiful crystalline wave. And they said, with this Stargate weekend, what is happening is that the second wave is about to awaken, meaning the 5D ascension wave of sort of the 5D alarm clock going off. And then they said something that was so powerful and so, I think, potent to this conversation, which was everyone is on their own divine timing of awakening. And when they said that, I just really realized that that's why you have those that are still very much in 3D, holding on to 3D. And if you're coming from 5D and you're trying to share a 5D perspective with them of what's happening in the world, they think you're absolutely insane because they are not at a time yet where they're choosing or they've chosen to awaken. I feel like this is a soul agreement. It is destiny. Yes, there is free will. But to me, I see a lot of this as a journey that each soul has chosen to experience for their lessons and their evolution of expansion. And I say that with a lot of reverence. And so from that place, I really am very excited to see that although it could appear that things are getting crazier and wilder and falling apart even more 
and everyone's maybe a bit more scared. If you look at it from an entirely other perspective, what if all of that is meant to awaken the second wave? And what if those that we are deeming as, and I'm just going to say this, and I know everyone's not going to agree with me, but what if those that we're deeming as the bad guys, what if those that we're deeming as, you know, the dark draconian controllers, and, and of course I use that languaging too, and it is true, but what if they are our greatest teachers in this? What if they are the ones that are showing up that are sort of like playing the role because I see it all as a huge stage too. We're all playing roles. So when I go beyond my role, I go into 5D neutrality. And yes, I have a role I came here to play. We all do. And that is a part of the awakening and the ascension. But what if they are playing these roles in such an extreme polar opposite to love to cause us to run in the direction of love and be like, I don't want to be in hell. I'm an earth angel. I'm a star seed. I want to experience heaven on earth. And sometimes we have to go so far in one direction of polarity of the opposite of love to come back to love. So I'm really seeing that as just something that is so exciting. And uh, with this Stargate portal that is, is happening this weekend, I also saw a rainbow yesterday. And whenever I see the rainbows, it's such a message of, I saw two yesterday, two rainbows, two waves, two, wa two rainbows, so two, two. It's really such a message of bridging heaven and earth. And the rainbows for me represent very much so this galactic portal energy. Every time I've ever seen a rainbow, I was just like, that's not of this world. That's of something else that's coming to remind us that we're not of this world. So that's, that's what's going, that's what came through for me this, this weekend about these energies. And on that note, I think I saw in the UK, I don't know if ladies saw in the UK, that huge orb size of rainbow. And yes. Okay, which was so, and, and the woman who was filming it was, she was like crying because like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. And then I think I saw some ET light ships in Turkey. It, yeah, you're, it, 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 and when, so when I see the world getting as chaotic, more and more chaos, for me, it feels like we're getting closer and closer and closer to full disclosure, which means everything that's been hidden in the shadows is now being illuminated because then we can release it to your point. We can see it and go, Oh, wait, 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 no, I don't agree with that. We're not going to, that's not how we're going to roll here on the planet. The more chaotic it gets to that. So yeah, I mean, it's so exciting. What's, what's um, really exciting. Tara, you're going to share something. Uh, it's just when Nina, when Nina said that, you know, about, um, I just, I completely am blissing out on this call, ladies. <laughs> it's so wonderful listening to you. What you just said, Nina, I love it. Um, we're not of this world. When I was giving birth, sorry, we're back to birth again. We talked about birth the number of times, but it's such a good thing to talk about. When I was giving birth to my first son, and um, I was actually kind of kneeling on the floor in this house that I'd rented in Byron Bay. Uh, no, sorry, Brisbane, Australia. I traveled from Brighton to Australia <laughs> to give birth. I wanted to just get away from everyone and just to do it my way. And I didn't have any intervention, no midwives, nothing. I was just like, leave me alone. I'm going to have a baby. And, <laughs> and um, right just before <clears throat> I'd gone through the labor, I was on my knees and just having this most incredible experience and the baby's head was crowning and I was putting my hand on the, on the baby's head as he was crowning and feeling him. And I was just like, wow, this is so amazing. And a little while later I was like, wow, he's, he's not coming out yet. And I could feel his little legs like frog legs up inside me and then springing off the top of my uterus as he pushed himself down and his little head was coming out and he was going backwards and forwards. Is this too graphic, Paula? I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, because I just didn't have any urge to push. I was absolutely in bliss. I was just like receiving this whole experience and I didn't have an urge to push. I was just relaxing and relaxing and relaxing and saying yes to everything that was happening and relaxing and receiving and trusting. 
And because I did that, I was absolutely tripping out, blissed out of my mind on all the oxytocin, right? I'm absolutely, you know, best experience ever. And, um, and <laughs> I get to that point where I go, huh, why isn't he coming out yet? I didn't think I'll push and make it happen, right? I just think to myself, why isn't he coming out yet? So I close my eyes. And the next thing I know, I'm not aware of my physical body. I'm not aware of my breath. I'm deep inside. I haven't left my body. I haven't gone. I'm deep within, totally focused on this energy that's happening inside of me. And I'm totally all that I can experience for some time and time disappears. I don't know how long this was for, right? I'm not in time. I'm completely in white light. And I hear this voice say to me, you are not your body. And I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> I'm not my body. And there was still a sense of my Tara consciousness. And there was a sense of this voice, this consciousness of this white light. This is just my experience. And I'm like, I knew that with my mind. But now I know it with my entire body and my entire being. There is no, I, there's no, you know, it's not just the saying from that Yoda said, you know, we are not this crude matter with the earth, these beings of light. It's like, I actually know this now I'm in it. And um, I was like, oh yeah, I'm not my buddy. Oh yeah. Next thing I know, I'm like, okay. Uh, it was like this little, you better go and birth the baby now. It's like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> And it's like, I come back into my body, feel my body, feel my breath. And I take a breath and the baby comes out just like that. And I'd had a fear of my body getting hurt. That was the one thing that had stopped me from letting go was this, I am my body and my attachment to my body and my attachment, what would happen to me if I really, really surrender to this experience. And when I completely surrender, it was like, I mean, there's just no, you can't even describe that. It is timeless. It's perfection. It's enlightenment. It's bliss. And my little one was born in that energy, which comes back to what you were saying, Kerry. And I want to make sure this gets re repeated again to understand what you were saying is that whatever we focus on and whatever we, we respond to or react to, we give it energy, which creates then more ripples. So if we are creating, and I can use this example as I'm creating a baby, right? Because that's a very physical thing to relate to, that in whatever state I am in is what, the, is the energy that I birth that creation of my child. He's born in bliss, absolute surrendered off my trolley bliss. <laughs> and it was incredible. He didn't cry. He didn't scream. He opens his little eyes. It's all good. You know, have this incredible connection. He was born in that state. And you can compare it to times when, you know, we, we all know of many stories and this isn't to judge anybody else's experience, right? Or to compare even, but just to say the amount of us that are born not in bliss, where we have a mother or we have a couple or whatever who is birthing that child. And there's all kinds of um, medical interventions, all kinds of interventions, mental judgment interventions thoughts, beliefs, crossing over each other's past, medical, um, you know, interceptions, interventions, all kinds of stress, all kinds of emotional tensions, all kinds of drama that get born with a child. And that's the energy that that child is born into. That's the very foundation of their life is that energy. And the ripple effects that that has in their life, and they're probably not even aware of it because it's, it's deeply embedded in the unconscious. It's embedded through all of every cell of their body in that moment. 
So if we can take that as an example, because it's visceral and tangible, and we can perhaps relate to that, then however we are now in our everyday waking moment, and this is a big responsibility, right? Because with big power comes great responsibility. And if we want to be a powerful person, if we want to make an impact, if we want peace on this earth and love in this world, then there's a great deal of ownership of responsibility of that, that it's not about going out there and telling everybody else how they should be or shouldn't be and putting your messages in their face and, and trying to change them, like you said, Nina, but just to kind of own the responsibility that as I am, so I create and everything I put my attention onto, I am going to create ripples of that. And if my energy is of fear and of doubt and of hatred and of judgment and of, you know, it's their fault, it's them, it's you, you should change, it's your, you know, or you're the government, you shouldn't be responsible or whatever, fighting something, then when we start, our energy is about fighting, we are only causing ourselves more damage and we're creating more of that which we don't want, which is exactly what you said, Kerry. And then we have to go back and deal with that more that we've created. Right? <laughs> it's like, you're, we're just creating more mess that we're going to have to go back and clean up. And my experience of cleaning that up is just by asking for forgiveness. I find that asking for forgiveness for myself and asking myself to forgive myself for the mess that I've created in my own ignorance is where I need to begin. And it's got nothing to do with anybody else's business. Like you said, Paula, it's like, this is a my business, right? How I experience life is my business. And to come in and to just get, clean, get the act cleaned up here and take responsibility here for the power that we have and leave everybody else's business alone and just everybody focus on taking care of their own business, cleaning up their own mess, and getting themselves into that space of actually consciously creating. And from that place, we can have any kind of world we want. And it's going to manifest from a place of bliss, from peace, from love, from consciousness. And we can have an amazing time creating from that place. And actually, some of us are already there creating that. So get on board because that's happening. <laughs> The dovetail off of what you shared there. So in heart math, we teach that um, with every heartbeat from beat to beat, a spark of electricity is created and it's powered from within itself. Like it powers itself, which I think is like, that's really trippy, right? And when we have electricity by default, this is mathematics, this is physics, an electromagnetic energy field is created. So Tara, what you were talking about, when we clean up that inside, so that the inner world is peaceful and we've forgiven our own F ups. You know, we've forgiven ourselves for where we've made mistakes. We've forgiven ourselves when we've understood behaviors that we are now witnessing in ourselves that are, that mortifies like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe I behaved that way. When we clean, clean that up, your field is, is cleaned up. And now you walk around, it's a carrier wave where you're, where you're singing harmoniously into the world as you walk around to become a gateway of peace of compassion because when we have those you know the, the fears and the bitternesses and the judgments about how everybody is behaving we carry that around with us and then it's like an invitation i would like more of this bitterness and forgiveness and so that i can experience enough of it to finally say hold on here i don't think i want to experience that anymore i would like some inner peace and some heaven so it's really what are you, when, when we are um, reacting to the world, pushing everything at us, and we're reacting that way instead of creating from that zero point, from that now point, when we are now projecting our peace and our harmony and our beauty and our love into the world, it creates a whole different experience, not only for yourself, but for everyone you interact with. So and everybody has the power to do that. That's, a, that's, that's the inherent gift for everyone. Nobody's, nobody's special in this. We're equally special. 
and no one's special because we don't value one life over another. All is sacred. And when you can witness sacredness in everyone, that's when your world becomes really magical and it's heaven on earth. You're right, Paula. Absolutely. And I feel like to have that level of self-awareness, self-love, self-forgiveness, self-acceptance, that's the relationship with yourself, your sovereignty, your, your responsibility to yourself to be in peace, to be in love. That's self-love, ultimately. And in loving yourself, even in loving yourself, you know, you know yourself. You, you know, to know yourself is to love yourself. To love yourself is to know yourself. And that is the most unselfish, selfless, enlightened thing I personally believe like anybody can do for the whole planet. You want to do something that makes an impact? Unconditionally love you. Put all of you, every single part of you into that vibration of unconditional love and take the steps. Go in, find the places that aren't in a vibration of love, that you aren't in peace with, that you are in reaction to, that you are in judgment, that you are in war with. And you go and find those parts of you and you ask for forgiveness. You, you spend time discovering what the pain is. And heal yourself and forgive yourself and come come to terms, come to peaceful terms with loving yourself in that way. And I feel like that's the most potent, powerful thing any human being can do for this entire world. Like, forget about everybody else. You're enough of a project on your own. <laughs> Go deal with you. <laughs> Thank you, Kerry. And then pass it over to you, love. Um, thank you. Tara, by the way, I loved hearing your birth story. <laughs> I loved hearing the bliss that you were in. It's so beautiful to hear women speak about empowered birth. So thank you. That was a real treat to hear. You know, when we go into the sacred neutral, we gain a power that we don't even know is available to us. And it's the power to collapse all of those polarized beliefs, all of those extremes. I mean, Tara, you were talking about the power of taking responsibility. You spoke about cleaning your mess and about how, in my words, that would be becoming a responsible creator. When we are in the sacred neutral, we've taken that power to a whole other level where we can now take everything that is out of place in our lives it is somehow distorted manipulated basic untruths and by our presence alone being in that presence as presence we come into divine balance we come into an automatic collapsing of that which is untrue and keeping us hooked into those realities of polarized perception. So it's not just coming into zero point is not just about oh, a pretty place to go, you know? It's about from a planet-wide perspective, where we go to for the ultimate healing, for the ultimate restoration of this creation that we experience as life on planet Earth. As we come individually, because that's all it takes, is for each of us as individuals to begin by taking personal responsibility for our creations and then ultimately working our way towards connecting with the now, connecting with the breath, coming into our sacred neutrality. And from that sacred neutrality, the power that we have is to collapse all that was untrue for us, embody that which is true for us. But imagine doing that on a mass scale. How instantaneously this world is transformed. You know, there are so many people that say, oh, there's so much to do. It's going to be so hard. I mean, much like Laurie was saying about time where we perceive perhaps that something is going to take five years or two months when we come out of time into 
the true sacred neutral zero point, we have the absolute power of recreation, to recreate from within, which is exactly where New Earth is. The birth, as Tara was talking about, the birth of New Earth happens with we are each a male and female to birth a new reality. The birthing of the new coincides with the collapsing of the old. And of course, if we look around us right now, what are we seeing? Yes, it's chaotic, but it's also collapsing, isn't it? And we feed, we feed both the chaos and the collapse by each of us silently going into our sacred neutral. Just wanted to share that. Can I add one thing to that? Every time you talk, Carrie, I get into this zone of like, mm, like I just get in this space where I'm like elevated conscious. I'm like, oh, wow. I just go into like a, I go into a zone. I'm like, oh, I could just listen. I'm like, like uh, mesmerized, like, whoo, my body just starts to vibrate. But I want to say to those, I'm, I'm listening to people's thoughts as they're watching you, right? So there are people that are going to watch the YouTube and they're having these thoughts. And so I'm hearing their thoughts as they're watching you. And what happens to a lot of humans that are not quite there yet, capable of like understanding, what is she taught? What does she mean the zero point that you're talking about, right? For us, we're like, oh yeah, we got it. We're there. When you have to come in the body, right? You have to, you have to go into your body. You have to embody. And when people that are not used to, when humans are not used to going into their bodies, they have to start feeling. And so what one, some of the steps that kind of occur as the unconscious human becomes conscious and then they start to step into their body and their breath and that space that you're speaking of so beautifully is then they're also feeling all this other crap that they're like, wait a second, Carrie didn't talk about this, right? Like there's other stuff that also we start to feel if you haven't felt it before because you haven't been in the body, but you want what Carrie's talking about, right? I want what Carrie's talking about. So then I get in the body. I'm like, well, this isn't what Carrie was talking about. I'm feeling anger and rage. like, there's all these other things that you have to navigate through when you also find yourself in that space that you're speaking of. So I just want to say to all of the humans that are like, I want what Carrie's talking about. Yes. You can get into that space just like that, but please also know when you do that, you may also, just like Tara was talking about, you've got to love yourself unconditionally at the exact same time as you're feeling all the other stuff you've never wanted to feel. You can't have one without the other. You can't. And they have to know that they're worthy of it. They're absolutely worthy of that incredible, unconditional love. It's all is forgiven, you know? Laurie, when you were talking about stepping back from the kaleidoscope and witnessing it as just a 8 billion different experiences, upbringings, perceptions, teachings, education, it's just an experience. When we can step back from that, I completely lost my train of thought. Worthy of it. We're worthy of that inner peace. We're worthy of that stillness, of that love, of that zero point. I've said it a lot this week, but it says in A Course in Miracles that love brings up everything unlike itself. Yeah. When you shine the light in the darkness, you're going to see shit that you haven't seen before. Mm. And you just clean up. It's just a clean up job. That's what angels do. That's what we do. We're just cleaning up. We've got mm. eons of passed on genetic inheritance, of stuff that's been dumped in the body, in the psyche, in the emotions, in the world that's buried under what people call time. Don't they say time heals? You just bury it and it's just gone. No guys, it just, no, that's not how it works. It looks like it's gone, but nothing is actually gone because it's all still here right now. We're still, everything we've ever buried ever, we're still standing on the top of pretending we can't see it. And the moment you just kind of get with the program and go, I didn't really bury anything. I just couldn't, you know, take it on consciously. 
and take responsibility and uh, own up to my stuff or own up to humanity's collective stuff that we think we've been burying and it's like no so you do have to kind of sift down and clean up through the layers to get to the bottom of who you are and it's worth the job because like every gold you have to dig for it like every diamond you have to go and do the work and to find those diamonds to find that treasure to find your worth to find your worth you know you've got to sift through all the junk first clean out all the stuff and, and basically the cleanup tool is unconditional love and forgiveness that cleans everything literally everything just go around with the cloth of forgiveness and love and um and then you discover who you are in the bottom of it and i was just thinking you know i'm looking at nina just thinking she looks like an absolute atlantean priestess goddess today like more than ever you usually look like a total goddess nina and today you're just absolutely uber goddessing it and i'm looking at you you it's like you're reminding me of eight thousand years ago when we used to hang out in atlantis <laughs> i'm just like looking at you you look such a so gorgeous and I'm just thinking, you know, the collapse of civilizations has happened over and over and over again. You know, Atlantis collapsed, Lemuria collapsed, you know, the ancient Egypt collapsed. They all collapsed. Many other civilizations that we know of or don't know of, they all collapsed. They all got destroyed. And that destruction point was where I believe Creator Source or Mother Earth Gaia, she comes in and says, you know what, guys, no, no, no. You don't get to destroy yourself. You don't get to destroy my me. You don't get to destroy Earth. You don't get to destroy creation. That's enough. We're taking the toys off you. Everything gets packed away. No, nope, no more playing with that. We're not going to let you destroy yourself. And, you know, whether you take that perspective or, you know, choose your own, you know, your own metaphor for seeing that. But it's essentially when human beings get too big for their own boots and their egos get too big and they think that they can control life and be God and start messing with genetics and start messing with nature. And severely humans have been messing with the food, the water, the air, the earth, the frequencies now. It's like, uh-uh, the plug gets pulled. Creator to the stores, Mother Earth says, no, you don't, kids. Uh-uh, you're too precious and I'm too precious, God damn it. She's like, I love myself enough. I am too precious to let you little buggers destroy me. <laughs> and so what, what doesn't work for us must be collapsed and, and put away back in the box. And the toys will get taken off of us. And we might have a tantrum, but it's for our own good. And you're better off just getting over the tantrum and kind of growing up and you know, stop destroying basically with, with our thoughts, with our emotions, with the whole thing, just stop destroying. Cause we've been creating out of the ego mind. So we've just, because we've, we bought into the idea of being separate, not only separate from each other, but separate from our creator. We've created a, a world without heart. It's a heartless world. It's all the ego mind. And the ego mind will never be able to rationalize or understand or comprehend source. You know, my guides were speaking this week in the class and they mentioned that, you know, we live in a shadow world and the light that we have is, or, the, or the light that we're aware of is but a twinkling of the great light. And, and, and when they said that, I'm like, ooh, I want more of that great light. Like, what would that be like? Because personally, I don't want to be angry. I don't want to be mad at someone for driving in one lane at, you know, or just like, it's so petty. It reminds me of that, the movie by Thor, you know, where he's, he lands, he's so cute, by the way. He lands on the planet and he's like, you humans are so petty. Like really, it's, it's insane to think that we would be mad at someone because they cut us off on the highway or they didn't wave back at you in the grocery store like it's we really need to come together and we can do such a better job i love tara your uh, your analogy of of the toys yeah let's it's time to put away the toys because we are at a point that's what the, this is that's what this is about this period in time our my guides say anyway this is the time of the reckoning the facing of the self and one's creations and of the collective so when we can clean up our own stuff forget about what everybody else is doing in their yard just focus on you. As my young son says to me, mom, you do you and I'll do me. If we did that, I think that we would literally 
shift in a heartbeat so quickly? I think the collapse that we're seeing is the most beautiful thing. And I know that I know that most people are looking at this collapse and moving into fear and 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 moving into their own kind of inner chaos around the very obvious societal collapse that's taking place right now. And thank you, Laurie, for that add-on to what I was saying earlier, because it's so important for people to move beyond the need for bliss or perfection to be the everyday norm. Because when we're in the sacred neutral, everything is acceptable. And in that acceptance, there is the deepest peace you will ever know. So there could be a whirlwind going on around you, and it could be fraught with all kinds of chaos. But when you're in your zero point, you are the eye of the storm. You are the seat of that calm, even if what you're witnessing is the collapse of your own untruths and your own misconceptions, which are the most painful collapses to witness. They are, because even when it serves us in the end that an old belief system collapses, it's a belief system that we've known. And we as humans have so often confused a belief system for an identity that when the belief system collapses, we feel as if we're losing ourselves or are a part of ourselves. So it's like a mini death when that happens. But if we learn to embrace the collapse, like I said, I see the collapse around us right now, and I know people are being injured, and I know that people are in pain, but the majority of the pain is the response to the collapse and not the collapse itself meaning it's the fear of the collapse and not the collapse itself. If we get out of our own way enough, we have the opportunity to be in that sacred centeredness and just allow, just allow for the collapse, knowing that from the collapse, the new birth happens. The true self arises. So beautiful collapsing, everyone. I feel like this whole conversation, we've all been going into zero point with our minds will just go blank and we're just feeling this presence with each other and with everyone tuning in and watching. It's so powerful right now. And I just want to thank all of you for everything that you've shared. I have this incredible feeling of heart gasmic bliss that's been bubbling this whole time. It's just gorgeous. And I also just wanted to share, to add on to what you're saying, Carrie, that I feel like what we're all talking about is acceptance is so important. Acceptance of where one is in the present moment. And what we're seeing play out right now is a lot of collective karma of all of the timelines that we've all experienced together because we have. And it's a funny thing to talk about past lives, well, it's really all happening now. So your past life in Atlantis is as presently active in you now as it was then. It's all now. We're operating on multiple timelines right now. And when you start to become aware of that and awaken to that, first it's a bit of a trip. And I would say that's when you're definitely more in this 4D, 5D experience where you can still start freaking out between the duality of oh my gosh, am I going crazy? Because your mind is it's pretty much adjusting to an entirely new way of perceiving the world and everything around you. But we have to accept everything that we have been and experienced through separation of all the timelines. And just as Tara said, we have to love it. Like a child that was crying out for love. And is the Divine Mother Gaia not the best example right now of by standing up and saying, I love me too much. I love you too much. 
is she not the best teacher of what a true mother is showing us, which is love yourself as much as I love me and I love you. I am going to teach you how a mother should mother her children. I'm going to remind you how holy you are. I'm going to remind you how precious you are. And what I'm hearing a lot of as we're tuning into this collective energy that's tuning into us right now with us, you're all with us. So I just want to speak to all, all of the women and men listening. When you have those moments and you hear in your own mind, oh, you're so stupid or, oh, you know, you, you're making this up or you're not enough. You're not worth this. Who are you to walk away from that situation? Who are you to want better than that? You know, what, this is how you've been since your whole life, or this happened to you when you were a child. So this is who you are now. All of that is exactly what you need to love more than anything. Those are aspects of you that are fragmented and scattered throughout time. Those are soul pieces that are frozen in time. And if you can love those like lost little children that are crying out for your love and embrace those and bring those back into your heart resonance, then you are bringing them back into the now. And that is how we shift into that 5D. That is beyond duality. And if we could all do that for each other and see that these people that are operating on what we consider to be the darkest levels of pain in humanity that want to hurt other people, that they are so broken, they are so lost. And that doesn't mean that we have to fix them. First, you fix yourself. First, you turn to yourself and you love yourself. But it means that once we do that, we can see what's happening outside of us in an entirely new manner without judgment. And discernment is entirely different than judgment. Judgment is this is right or this is wrong. Discernment is spiritual wisdom of what is in the best and highest for me? What is the guidance right now coming through? How do I serve source in this situation or for myself? Not um, I'm going to do this because this seems to be most loving, or I don't want to say no because I don't want to hurt their feelings. And what I find with a lot of angelic workers, and I, I was totally included in this, and I really don't think I got this lesson probably till the past two years, is that we have a tendency to be focused so much on everyone around us that we're constantly focusing on how do I help to heal them, but we don't look inside at our own scattered frozen pieces, our own broken pieces, and go, wait a second, this really is all a reflection outside of me. So I just wanted to offer that because coming from a sense of vulnerability and bringing it down to a level of sometimes people are watching this and this might be overwhelming for them because they might not be operating where we're talking from. They might still be in this place of, I still feel broken inside. I'm still struggling with addiction. I still think I'm worthless. I want to get there, but how do I get there? By loving the part of you that is the addict. By loving the part of you that doesn't think you're worth it. You have to become your best lover. It is a, a romance that happens within between mother and father. Marriage within you. That's how I feel. I am married to that. That union has changed my life. Every day is romantic. I am in love with that within me. It is like poetry that sings through my heart when I'm in that space. And all I want to do is attain that experience more and more through every moment. So every moment I turn to that and say, how do you guide me? How do you lead me right now? What is love telling me to do? How can I show up in my 5D self right now? Really, that's all it takes, humbling yourself and being vulnerable enough to surrender and let go. It's not about perfection. None of us are perfect. It's about accepting that we're not perfect and allowing that divinity to come in and love us in that imperfection because we are perfectly imperfect. Exactly. We're perfectly important, imperfect. And to your point, Nina, these aspects, because it does take courage. Shit. It really does take courage. Everyone out there, we've seen our own challenges within our own being where we've behaved in a certain way that would be less than perhaps um, appropriate. So when, when, those, when, when we see that kind of stuff that we've been ashamed of before or embarrassed by, it just needs to be loved. It needs, you're shining light on aspects of yourself because you can't change what you can't see. 
And once you can see it, it can be freed. It can be lifted and renown in a higher way. Because yes, we are perfectly imperfect. And these challenges and errors perhaps that we made through being wrong-minded, it was done in innocence. It was done in our own innocence and not having perhaps access to information then. You know, I did this before and I'm not really proud of it, but you did the best you could with the information that you had at the time. All right. Just to share with everyone that's listening to. I totally love what you both said about that. Thank you so much for sharing that with everybody. And it's particularly, I feel like this being the solstice with the eclipse this morning or whichever part of the world you're in. For me, it was early morning for you guys in America. It was during the night. And I've been feeling like we all know it. Well, a lot of us know eclipses are about endings, rebirth, and new beginnings. And here we are in that middle eclipse of three, the, new, the no moon or new moon solar eclipse. And then in two weeks time, we've got another full moon lunar eclipse, another one. But right now it's that midpoint transition between having all the stuff that's come up in the last couple of weeks with that full moon. And it went ballistic with all of the riots and the anger coming up. And it was squared Mars and Pluto and all this other stuff was going on and the anger that was coming out of people. And beautifully so, right? The pus has to come out of a wound. It, you have to get that out of the body and out of the system. And here we are at this point right now of this first day of the solstice and just after the solar eclipse where there's been a rebirth moment, a reset. And I started to feel it last night. I was on the phone to my dad just before we came onto this call and he was like oh, everything changed last night the energy was just changing and i could feel it and i wonder who else felt that as well and this is my dad saying this and then um this point now of this eclipse and of course an eclipse happens every year but i feel like uh, this is you know quite unique because of everything that's going on in the world and plus there hasn't been a solar eclipse on a solstice since 1955 apparently so it's quite a rare occasion but also how it feels to me about the a real convergence of those timelines that you were talking about Laurie it's a convergence point where all of the options and all of the choices and all of the strands that we have been down in the past, let's say past lifetimes or past and potential futures, it all feels to me like there's, it's a convergence moment. And the convergence moment isn't a right now, okay, at 12 o'clock on whatever day, it's, it's almost like a, a constant becoming more convergent, more convergent, more, com more harmonious, more harmonious, as more aspects of each soul start to come back together, as each timeline that we have ever lived are coming to a beautiful finale, a beautiful wrapping up and a closure. You know when you just have get closure on a relationship? What a relief. Oh, or you get closure on an old situation and it's just like, ah, oh, you can move on then. And so this is what I feel like this time is really precious and today and the rest of the todays that can happen from today, but this incredible moment of this convergence of these wrapping up relationships, beliefs, soul contracts, healing wounds, timelines, past, present, future, all of these coming into this beautiful wrapping up harmony. And the way that I hear humanity is like a symphony and we're all an instrument in this incredibly massive, massive symphony playing out. And each, just like a piece of music, you don't get the music by everybody clanging on their instrument at the same time. <laughs> That's not unity. That's not harmony. The harmony is when every single human being plays what they're supposed to play, they, they're doing them at the time that they're doing them. And you have to have the ear to listen for the harmony that that makes. The symphony, or as people learn to find more harmony with themselves, the whole thing starts to sharpen up a little bit. 
you know and it's like each instrument each player each orchestrator each creator each human being starts to come into more harmony with themselves and therefore more harmony with the whole orchestration and the timing and the rhythm of each thing of each instrument of each section that needs to do, 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 do you know <laughs> my orchestrator noise <laughs> um you know playing out in the whole harmony and this energy going forward from this eclipse is about and what world are you creating next? How much of your harmony have you embodied? How much of your understanding of all your lifetimes of all, or even the years that you've been living in this lifetime, how much harmony can you really kind of conglomerate and draw on and connect to and give that your attention, as well as all the stuff that's out of harmony, you have to bring attention to that too, but also bringing in what harmony do you have? What peace do you have? What would you like to create more of? And let's birth, you know, consciously, even, you know, over the next year that's going to play out between now and the next eclipses next year. But even in the, the energy of the next few days going forward or the next week, even from now, that super, super powerful new moon energy after an eclipse where we can really come together. So it's such a powerful time, Paula, that you orchestrated so perfectly on the beat with the new moon and the full moon and the new moon and the full moon to have these conversations so that we just happen to be having this conversation on the solstice and the solar eclipse and this energy today. And the conversation that we've been having seems absolutely so perfect for this energy that's you know we're talking about that collective blissful birthing that peace on earth and it just feels perfect to me so i just wanted to call that out and kind of say well done <laughs> well done paula and yay us i have to give all the credit to my higher self because i don't run my life anymore i don't and um it's glorious because the complexity is removed from my life it's just like whatever is presented it's like okay i guess we're doing this now so i'm open i say yes to what comes i feel very guided and this is accessible for everybody this is our divine birthright having christ consciousness and having having that um higher level of comprehension so that way the way that we show up in the world is with kindness and compassion because there's only us here and we need not fight. We need not um, struggle together. We can create so much beauty. It's, it's so obvious, right? Like, so I can't, I th thank you. Those, that's lovely kind words, but I can't take credit for it. I'm just a vehicle. I've said, yes, I would like to serve others. It feels way better than being a selfish, person. I, I really do love humanity and I, I, the existence that we have here can be, you know, I, I, want, I want the joy that I feel in my heart for every single person, every single human being. If they could feel what I feel, they wouldn't, they, they, would, put, they would put down their weapons. You know, it really hurts me when I see people hitting each other and being so violent with each other in these riots because rioting and Rioting isn't going to get us the peace. Condemning someone for what they've done is not going to get us the peace. It's the compassion and the kindness that's in our hearts. That's really natural to who we are. It's a natural way of being, right? So we're getting really close to the hour, and I want to maybe give Lori an opportunity to share any last thoughts. I'm so grateful that both you and, well, everybody, I'm so grateful that you guys come to have these chats and you know it was really funny I was getting caught up with Chrissy on Friday because there were some um, I, I feel like we're really just you know like at the bottom of our backyards hanging up laundry and we're just having our chats at the bottom you know we're putting up the washing because that's all we're really doing right we're gathering together to to share what um, as you know Samadhi Carrie Carrie had Samadhi speaks on her site it's so funny because i've been writing samadhi on my water bottle for years and we all have access to this knowing and this wisdom in our own perfect way 
And so, yeah, Lori, would you like to maybe, maybe uh, send us off on this beautiful day of energy and sharing? I just feel so like blissed out right now. I'm like, wow, this is, this has just been amazing. This has just been, I hope everybody that watches this really settles in to what, what we opened to today, this, this really beautiful space. Cause I've just been in a, a huge amount of bliss, um, that I'm not always in when I walk around in my everyday now. Um, and I think I want to just piggyback really quickly on what Tara said about the energies right now. And it, whether, whether you're watching this in this right now, now moment or the next now moment or whatever now moment you're watching this in, it's the now moment for you that you're experiencing this now moment that we're experiencing. This is a massive unifying moment for so many of us, all of us, whether you're aware of it or not, we are unifying all the different timelines, like Tara said, we're unifying past lives, like Nina said, we're unifying into our one zero point field of all of who we have ever been and that we are right now, like Carrie talks about that, this unified field of uh, sacred, one, what do you, what, I forgot what she's, sacred field, sacred oneness. Sacred neutral. Sacred neutral, beautiful. This is what we're doing right now in the midst of these two clips. This is the energy right now is this unifying coming together, bringing all the pieces that we don't like about ourselves into this unified field. It's just about unifying and that's what's happening externally. So if we remember this in our every now moment that this is about unifying, unifying, unifying over and over again, simplifying everything to that, that's, it, it's that simple. It's not complicated. And then from there, you can take all the steps that you need to be able to understand how and what that means. But we're unifying. We're unifying our own fragmented pieces. We're unifying the collective. And when you talk about this beautiful subject, the unified feel, the, the oneness, the, the now, that, that is, that's what we're doing right now. That's what's happening right now. That's the energy right now. That's what you're doing. All of us are doing that right now. We're just practicing. We're learning. We're trying to understand it, right? We're, we're peeling back all the layers. But this, is, this conversation is what is occurring right now energetically for all of us, and we're just experiencing it differently. It's freaking amazing that this is the conversation today. It's just, it's magic. So it's been such a pleasure being on with you ladies. I, it's been, the energy's just been so fabulous. So thank you. Drink it up. Thank you very much for joining. I'm so grateful that we can all come together. And so um, a quick little, a couple of little things uh, before we end. We, uh, again, everyone is welcome. So if you have folks that you would like to participate with us, please do make those recommendations. That would be lovely. Um, we have a Facebook page, uh, the Divine Feminine Roundtable. Again, it's a celebration of the energy because we need more heart. We need more softness, softness inclusion, and more heart in the world. Um, so please feel free to join there. And have I forgotten anything? No? All, all is well. Okay, good. Thank you, everybody. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you so much.